Hey guys, my name is Joe. Today we're gonna to talk about trailer hitches. If you're a sportsman and you've got multiple trailers and trucks, different hitch heights, trailering, etc., we're gonna show you the receiver hitches and, and why it's important to keep that load level. All right, so here we are. We're gonna hook up our Tundra to our new trailer. The great idea here behind having a three-way adjustable ball on our hitch is this particular trailer, which is listed on every trailer, takes a two and five sixteenths ball. So in this application, I'm gonna rotate it to two and five sixteenths and put the pin back in. So I have the right ball size set up for this particular trailer. The second thing you wanna take note of is towing a level trailer. Now this is gonna change based on tongue weight and capacity, how much gear you have in the bed of your truck and what the load is going on the trailer. But generally speaking, you want a level trailer while you're towing. And if you can't be perfectly level, then, you, then I always try to choose to be slightly up. It seems like those trailers that are nose down generally have a bad attitude and don't tow nearly as nice as a level or, or a trailer that's slightly high in the front. So this particular ball hitch has three balls on it. This is the inch and seven eighths. We have a two inch and a two and five sixteenths. Not all two trailers are the same. So in this case, for today's trailer, we have a two and five sixteenths ball. You simply release the stainless pin, rotate it to the right size of the ball, and then reinstall your hitch pin. Now the second most important thing, other than having the right ball size, is the height of the receiver. On this particular hitch, we can actually pull the pins out here for the adjustability, and I have options all the way from the top position down to a really low trailer. If that happens to not be enough adjustability, these hitches are built for a drop or a rise. So right now I have it in the drop setting. I can actually lower it all the way to the bottom or I can rotate the receiver and install it back in the truck and I can change this to a rise hitch. Now, likely not gonna ever use the top hole, but that's the idea behind the adjustability. You never have the wrong trailer hitch with you. So here we are, we're gonna hook up our trailer. Now, when I'm unloaded, I have the correct ball size here at two and five sixteenths. I like to start a little bit high because presumably we're gonna put some weight on this trailer. So right now, the trailer's not level, but when we get the right load on it, hopefully it will be. We center the uh, ball hitch over the coupler, and lower it down. Now we have some tongue weight on the truck. Now this particular trailer has a drop leg. I'm gonna release that, put it back up in the stowed position. Lock in my coupler. Never forget to put your hitch pin in. I see a lot of guys running around without these. It is a major safety concern and I have seen multiple trailers become disconnected from guys that install their quarter inch hitch pin across the coupler. Now this is on most trailers, I should say all trailers that have trailer brakes. This truck has electronic trailer brakes which is gonna be controlled by the brake controller on the truck through their seven-way connector. This cable, a lot of guys don't realize, when it gets pulled or released like that, it actually applies through the battery that's installed in the trailer, it'll lock the trailer brakes up. It's a safety thing if the trailer ever came disconnected from the truck, it slows the trailer down and, and hopefully keeps it out of harm's way. So this is designed to be hooked to the truck, not your safety chains. It's gonna be separate from that, because if your safety chain comes off, you're not gonna release your trailer brakes. Put your safety chains on, and we're ready to tow. Last but not least, when you get everything hooked up, is your seven-way. Now, a lot of your larger trailers are gonna have a seven-way connector on it that has all your functions for your turn signals, your reverse uh, battery charging, etc. cetera. Uh, a lot of the newer trucks have the four-way adapter on them. And for those of you guys with boats, your boat's generally gonna have a five-way on it with an adapter. And a lot of guys scratching their head like, what's that for? The fifth wire in that setup is to release your trailer brakes when you're in reverse. So those larger boats that have tandem axle and has surge brake tongue, that fifth wire releases an actuator that's built into the receiver that actually releases the trailer brakes so you can back your truck specifically uphill. So we have our truck and trailer hooked up and we're ready to put a load on it. Now today, we have this tandem axle trailer. These have 5,200 pound axles on it. This is roughly a 10,000 pound rated trailer. And what I wanna talk about is keeping your load level. It's gonna make sure the truck tows properly, 
but more importantly, the weight is distributed over both axles in the trailer. Now, what I mean is, I see a lot of loads out there that are disproportionate. They have too much weight, too far forward or too far back. As a general rule, you want about 10% of your tongue weight of your trailer load. So if this is a 10,000 pound trailer, I want 1,000 pounds of tongue weight on my ball hitch. Now, we're not gonna carry a scale around with us generally, but that being said, it's kind of just by feel and by sight. If the trailer looks level, it probably is. Now, if you have your load not centered, what's gonna happen is one axle or the other is gonna take some significant abuse. It's a 10,000 pound trailer, but it's designed to have 5,000 over this one and 5,000 over this one. If you don't have it loaded properly, the bearings are gonna take a lot of heat and it's gonna cause stability issues, tire wear, uh, bearing problems in the future. So this is where loading your trailer is as or more important than the right pin height on your adjustable receiver up front. One thing we see a lot at the shop is irregular tire wear. If your trailer is not level or you're not loading the trailer properly, one axle or the other is gonna carry more load than, than the opposite axle. So that being said, if you're wearing out two sets of front tires for every set of your rear, you may wanna take a look at your loading and how level your trailer is to keep them tires wearing evenly. A lot of times the, the tires themselves will tell you the story. If they're wearing irregular or have some chopping versus the rear set, for example, you should take a look at how your trailer's set up. The larger flatbeds are definitely easier to tell if they're level or not. They're generally long, and if you stand back, it's pretty visible to see if the trailer looks like it's physically level. Now, if you have a shorter trailer or, or maybe a boat trailer, they might not be so easy. So in that case, you could take a four foot level or whatever you have, place it on any level surface, such as the frame or the deck, and you can get a little bit closer example of what exactly is level and what is not.